Hi, I'm Kirsten Gunrud with the Play Create Podcast, and I don't have my sidekick with me today, but I do have my good friend, Sam, and what I really want to talk about today, Sam, and what we're in the middle of right now with all of our um, subscribers to our email and things like that is a 14-day Listen to Your Heart, Connect with Your Heart series. And it's all about using this month of love, this month of February, as a way to connect with your heart and a way to turn inward, not just outward, with that love mm-hmm. and start um, hearing all the amazing things that your heart has to tell you. And I, I've always thought a long time ago, a friend of mine gave me a necklace that was a, a compass in a heart. And it was a time where I was really struggling and had a lot. And I don't think before then it had ever occurred to me, or maybe not, I'd never fully processed it, that your heart is really truly a compass and can really help lead the way. And so that was a powerful thing for me. And as I've done my work and learned, I've, I've tuned into that more and more and more. And you are amazing on so many levels. You've got your Aww. book, Bigger Love, that you've already written. You have a new book coming out. And the name of that again is? Marriage from Miserable to Magnificent. Yes. So you've got your new book coming out. You've done two TEDx talks. You work with people in relationships and love and all these things. And uh, part of why I wanted to have you on today is... I have always thought of you as being driven so much from your heart. And then recently you had this experience where you realized maybe you weren't as driven by that. And it has taken you on this amazing journey. So I'm going to shut up now and and wondering (laughs) if you would share with us about that journey and, and just kind of what made you realize that and then the the stories and adventures that have shown up for you when you really decided to fully embrace that and see what happens. All right, let's do it. (laughs) Um, Gosh, can you believe it's coming up on a year? Um, Yeah. So this happened last, it happened in March of uh, 2019. And I went to this, um, this workshop with a gentleman by the name of Philip McKernan who does great work, difficult work, a lot of inward looking and, um, you know, trying to figure out what's going on there. And one of the things that he had asked me was, do I trust myself? Mm. And And the clear answer was no, I don't. I don't trust myself. And a lot of it had to do with, um, my anxiety and my anxiety disorders and my panic attacks. I didn't feel like I could trust my body. My body was doing its own thing and I didn't know how to deal with it and that, and it come, and it still comes up. So I didn't feel like I could trust it. But then I realized it's much deeper than that. Um, so he's an interesting guy. He um, relies almost solely on his intuition to drive everything and anything he does. And he says he does that out of, um, necessity because he's he's dyslexic so he he doesn't learn well he doesn't read well um, he he just has trouble he doesn't he doesn't trust his mind he only trusts his heart yeah. so a lot of his, all of his his programs are like brave heart brave soul brave you know being brave and then it's really tied into your spirit so after this um, workshop which was really interesting because during the workshop, he did not say one word to me. He had asked me that question when I was working with him, actually with Symmetry 7. Yeah. I think you were there. I was. Yeah, when we were in Boulder, Colorado, yeah. and we had our own little private session with Philip, and he, that was where he asked me that question. During this workshop that I went to, he did not say one thing to me. And he did in-depth work with every other person there. I don't think, I don't know if he's aware of it, I don't know. I I don't know if I'll ever tell him that because we still, you know, do work with him and stuff. Um, but I was like, that kind of spun me out a little bit. 
I was like, why did that happen? And some, and you know, I was like, did I imagine that? Did he work with everybody else but me? And Pat's like, no, he definitely worked with everyone. And then, then another guy's like, oh, yeah, you're right. That's so weird. He never even talked to you. So I went back because I was kind of like, well, I got gypped. <laughs> so I went back and watched the video. Luckily, we had videoed um, his session with us. So I went back and watched the video and I was like, what? And I kind of blew him off in the video, actually, because he said, do you trust yourself? And I said, I'm not going to answer that because I just had an epiphany. So I'd had an epiphany while he was speaking and I wanted to talk about that. And I didn't really want to talk about the trust thing. So I was like, huh, that's interesting. And then I was like, do I trust myself? I'm like, I don't. I don't think I do still. I don't listen to my intuition. I don't even know where it is. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do an experiment. And for as long as I can stand it, I'm going to do whatever my intuition tells me. I'm going to be asking it on a moment to moment basis yeah. what I should do next. Yeah. And I was terrified. I was like, oh my God, I don't know what's going to happen. And I told my husband and he's like, I think it's great. I'm like, are you sure? And he was leaving town for a few days. So it was also a good opportunity for me to try this experiment. So I started asking it questions. And to be honest, I can't really remember what those first few days were, were like. I know I did a lot of journaling. I did a lot of meditating. And when I went to pick Patty up from the airport, I told him I had to leave. I had to go. I didn't know where I was going. I was pretty sure I was going to, I was going to take our, we have a little 24 foot RV. I was going to take the RV somewhere. Um, and I thought driving South would make sense since it was winter. Um, but I didn't really know where I was going to end up. And he said, well, that's great. Maybe you should try, um, maybe you should try to um, camp in this one spot that's kind of down by Vegas. And I thought, oh, that's great. I can't remember what it's called now. Anyway, I said, yeah, that's probably a good idea. So I did. I got in the RV and I left the next morning. And I didn't know where I was going and I didn't know what was going to happen. So I started driving towards that, that place where we thought I could camp. I must have left in the afternoon, actually, because I didn't get there until it was dark. It was pitch black when I got to this campground and it was full. And I had no, the RV wasn't, it wasn't ready. So I had to like put water in it. I guess that's the only thing I had to do. I had to try to put water in it. So um, anyway, it was quite an ordeal in the dark. And this then I got most people would go, yep, doesn't work. And they would like turn around and head home. Right. You know, yeah. I, listened, I got this far and it's not happening. So I'm out of here. Yeah, no, my intuition was my intuition was like, no, you're not. We are not going home. Yes. We're not going home. That's not what's happening. I was like, are you sure? I, <laughs> but it became a voice. It became a very clear, loud voice. Yeah. Um, Oh, one of the things that did happen before I left was um, she said, call me Samantha, which is my name. Mm -hmm. And um, she said, I'm this, I'm Samantha. I'm the Samantha of you, of Sam. Mm -hmm. And I decided to look up what that meant. And, and I don't know if she told me to look it up. I, I, I don't remember how that happened, if I heard the voice or not, but it means God listener. So I started crying and was like, oh my God, I'm supposed to be listening to this thing. And Samantha is the part of me that listens to God. So at some point, at some point in my life, I have this dream that I will be listening to God so often that I'll be introducing myself as Samantha. Yeah. I'm not there yet. So anyway, okay, so here we are. It's the, it's, it's pitch black. It's super dark. I've just put water in the RV. I get back in and I start getting turn by turn directions. You know, go, go here, turn right, um, turn left. However, I don't even know. I didn't know where I was. It, I was not coming. I was not going the same way I came. So I'm just letting her drive. Yeah. Um, and she said, um, start looking to the left there's gonna be there's gonna be a parking lot to the left and we're gonna we're gonna stay there that night we're gonna stay there tonight yeah 
And sure enough, looking to the left, looking to the left, and there is, there's a parking lot. It's like a dirt, just a dirt area. So I parked there, stayed there that night. By the way, I'm scared. I, I don't know where I am. I'm kind of afraid. And I keep saying I'm afraid. And she's like, it's okay. All's well, like all's well, calm. Everything's fine. So the next morning she's like, we're not staying here. We have to move. You need to walk down this road and see there's a campground. There's going to be a camp spot for you. So I'm like, okay. So I get out of the RV. I walk down and sure enough, there's a camp spot. So I get back in the RV and now I'm, now I'm very, I'm easily listening to her. And I was like, well, I'm still arguing with her though. Cause she's like, okay, you need to get out and um, go find the camp spot. And I'm like, I need my raincoat. It's going to rain. She's like, you don't need it, but you can put it on kind of a thing. You know, mm-hmm. I put on my raincoat and I go find the camp spot. And as soon as I get into the RV after I'm back, it starts raining, <laughs> but it didn't rain the whole time I was out there. Anyway, just funny, weird things, right? But I get to this camp spot and it's, it's definitely been, um, there have been some people like, they there's like two or three big TVs that have been completely like smashed and there's bullet casings everywhere. So it's kind of, cre- it's a little bit creepy to be honest. And I'm already scared. And she has me that whole day, you know, she has me kind of like walking around and meditating and I wrote a song. But the next morning when I got up, she said, okay, today we're going to make art. And I was like, make art. I don't, I don't like write a song because I, you know, I write songs and she's like, no, we wrote a song last night. You're, you're going to like make art. I said, I don't, I don't make art. She's like, you're going to make art and it's going to be, um, you're going to use all this garbage. You're going to turn this creepy, scary thing into something beautiful. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not. Mm -mm. This is dangerous. Like it's, I don't know if you've ever seen a TV, but it's like giant, like this, the glass inside of a TV is like this thick and it's really sharp and scary and I'm like I'm not pit- and there's wire and rusted metal and I'm thinking tetanus because I have this uh, you know anxiety brain where everything's going to be a tragedy um I'm like I can't do it she's like there's work gloves in the RV and I was like no there's not she's like your work gloves are in the RV just go get them they're inside and I was like I didn't bring them she's like no they're inside they're up in the thing so I get in there sure enough my work gloves are in there and I could have sworn I took them out I was like no I don't have them here So I get these work gloves out and I'm like, I don't know what to make. What am I going to do? And I'm like, well, I'm all about love. So I'm just going to make a heart. So I draw this heart in the dirt and I have it facing the RV. And I'm like, because that's how, you know, that makes sense to me. And I'm like, this isn't right. It doesn't look right. It has to face, it has to face a different way. And it looked, so I scribbled that out and I draw it just facing this random way. And I'm like, okay, this is how it's, I can tell this is how it goes. It's just fits better in the space. So then I spend all day building this piece of art. And by the end, it is like a beautiful heart. It's really sparkly because of all the glass. And, you know, I've used the red shell casing to highlight different parts (laughs) of it. And I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. I was like, sweet. So I'm on top of the RV. I'm taking some pictures of it and whatever. And so anyway, that, you know, I'm still listening. We're still meditating a lot and barely eating, by the way, which was interesting. I I didn't, it it wasn't a lot of eating happening. It wasn't something that my intuition was terribly concerned about, um, which I thought was interesting. And I didn't feel hungry. So I don't know what that was about. But anyway, the next morning, the next morning, she's like, "Time, get up, get up, get up, get up. And I'm like, okay, great, whatever. I get up and the sun's starting to come up. It's still kind of dark. The sun's starting to come up. And she's like, you need to just stay out here. Get a chair, like go get your coffee, get a chair and just wait. Yeah. So I get a chair and I'm watching the sunrise. And as the sun starts to come up, I realize that the point of the heart is pointed exactly, 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 exactly. Yes. (laughs) I have pictures exactly where the sun came up. Yeah. 
exactly. And of course I started bawling and, um, and I liked the way when I told you about this, how you explained that, that that's like my, my, my heart compass, right? She had me build this beautiful, this beautiful art and, um, facing right where the sun comes up. Yeah. It was a magnificent experience. Yeah. Yeah, and a magnificent experience to hear and, and have shared. And as you know, I've, I've shared it a little bit with people so far, and I'm so excited to be sharing it on this bigger level because I think it's so powerful. And it's um, such a testament to you to be willing to listen. I think a lot of us, like I said, I, I had a day, I think I've told you, it was when we had the solar eclipse. Yeah, and I kept feeling this longing to go, but I kept waiting for my husband and my kids and everyone to get excited and nobody did. So I never really made plans and I didn't know how important it was to my heart till it was that morning and it was too late to really get to it. And so then I'm trying to get to it and nothing's working and um, I'm so frustrated and we drive and we're going to go here and then I realize there's still not time to really get there. So I let the kids and my heart kind of take over but actually in that case it was more my kids and that I thought we were going left and the kids were like no go right and then we're driving and we get to this campground and they're like this is where we need to be we're the only people there other than two other um, cars and we have this unbelievable time with the partial eclipse where we were and spending time with this, these amazing rocks in this river and just having this beautiful experience. And at the end, we're getting stuff put back in the car and I have uh, my shirt on with my ahimsa and this woman walks by and she's like, I'm about to give this bracelet to my friend and it's exactly the same symbol that you have on your shirt. And I was like, oh wow that's cool and so we like talk for a minute and she goes to give her friend the bracelet and I'm thinking that was really cool and interesting and I keep packing up the car and we start to drive off and as we're driving off all I keep hearing is you don't believe in coincidences you don't believe in that why are you driving away and I was like I kept kind of ignoring it at first because that's what we tend to do we all that is what we do we all hear these things, but most of us, the minute it doesn't work, like I was, I was joking, but I wasn't. Most people would have gotten to that campground, seen it was full and decided, yep, see, it's wrong. And I wanted to make it or like, just, no, we need to get home. I've got things to do. And, and instead I was like, okay, fine. If I'm going to teach people this and I believe in this the way I say I do, I have to turn this car around right now. So we turn the car around, we go back, I pull up to where these ladies are and the, the one lady literally comes running and she's like, we've been looking for you, we thought you left. And I'm like, no, well we did, but I just kept hearing, this isn't a coincidence, you need to go back. And they're like, we're so glad you did. None of us even know why or what at this moment and yet that's the conversation right mm -hmm. and then it turns out that there's all these synchronicities and all these reasons we were supposed to meet and it turned into this just absolutely magical thing that none of us would have ever known if I had kept driving and they hadn't come looking for me and so that was that was kind of my equivalent of your heart thing in terms yeah. of really seeding how powerful that compass is and the magic that shows up when we listen to it 